We're now going to turn to uh, Dr. Frank Barnes, who is uh, a distinguished professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Um, he is a recipient of the National Academy of Engineering's top educational honor, the Bernard Gordon Prize. Um, Dr. Barnes is a fellow in IEEE, um, and he served as chair of the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department uh, for 17 years. Um, he has been elected to the National Academy of Engineering in 2001. And uh, uh, Dr. Barnes and his team have, have spent a lot of time working on, on energy storage problems. Um, and he is a representative of the uh, University of Colorado to the Rocky Mountain uh, Secure Smart Grid Initiative. Creek, 
which I handle up to about 320, 360 megawatts, which you can turn on and off in about five minutes. Now, Cabin Creek was put in in the 60s on the basis that coal-fired uh, energy was cheap at night, and you could pump the water up the hill at night, let it run down in the daytime, and you could top out and match some of your peak loads. Now you have a certain percentage of time where you're going to get very rapid changes and you're going to have hard trouble following this. And the example I think of is we lost 750 megawatts on beach table when the wind came up. Not came up and it wasn't the lack of wind, we could have shut it off, it was the fact that we had to shut the turbines down in order for them not to explode on us. So you lost 750 megawatts, if I'm sitting at the control board, that's a big enough transient to get my attention. Okay. So you've got rates of change problems. You also have a capacity problem. And if you look at this curve, which is a low duration curve, if you look at the far right hand side, if basically in Colorado we can't turn the power down below about 300 me 3,000 megawatts without having to get into troubles with our coal-fired plants. So you can see the bottom part of this curve, you've got conditions as we add more wind energy to the system, we're going to wind up with an increasing amount of time when we've got more power available than we can use. So this is a, one of the problems that we've got to deal with. All right, You can look at then the cost of integrating additional wind energy into the system. And you know at 10%, our cost of production is the order of about $2.25% integrated. If you go up towards 20%, your cost of integrating into the system goes up towards seven bucks, all right? So you've got an increasing amount of time as we increase the penetration of renewable sources in there in terms of what it's gonna cost us to integrate this into the system. 